Good afternoon, everybody. Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And today I thought I would uh, show you a distribution of Linux that I recently installed um, from a live ISO. And uh, it was obtained from a download link on ArchLinux uh, website. And so it's uh, my distribution of Arch Linux that I'm using currently on my main PC running off a uh, 120 gigabyte SSD drive. So let's take a look at it right after this. Okay, I'm back, and um, I'm up on the Arch Linux website at archlinux.org, and um, I'm actually out on the download link here. So if you click on the download, if you are on the home page, and here's the home page, you click on the download link, it'll take you out to this page here. Uh, and so to get started with uh, installing Arch Linux uh, like I did uh, on a SSD drive, 120 gigabyte uh, attached to my main PC, which is a tower, uh, Core i3 8th generation uh, processor um, running off of a USB 3.0. You click on that link there and you can see here that the, you have information on the release itself which is uh, uh, a kernel 5.9.2. The ISO itself is 731.3 megabytes in size. I did install it, like I said, on hard metal. Uh, SSD and um, the current release here of the ISO image is the 2020.11.01 so if you come down the page what I did was I grabbed um, let me scroll on down went down to United States since that's where I'm at and I went to the Arizona EDU site for the mirror and I clicked on this link right here which is Arch Linux 2020 dot eleven oh one dash x eighty six sixty four iso uh so that means that it's a uh, thirty two bit and sixty four bit um and so here it's seven hundred and thirty one megabytes in size so I clicked on that and when I grabbed that link um then I installed Arch Linux from this ISO so let's go out briefly here to uh distrowatch.com so here's the website uh and I'll put a link to all of these down below the video by the way but we're out on distrowatch.com. It's a great website for following uh, distributions of Linux and um, also uh, BSD and some other, uh, even Windows, I believe. But uh, for today, we're looking at Arch Linux. And so I'm out on the Arch Linux link here, and it says that Arch Linux is uh, based on an independent uh, distribution. Uh, it's been around for quite a while. And uh, its origin is in Canada. It has the x86-64 architecture, which means it is available in both 32-bit and 64-bit ar architecture. The desktops available for Arch Linux uh, are Cinnamon, Enlightenment, Gnome, KDE, LXDE, Mate, and XFCE. There are others as well, but they're not listed here. We'll probably look at some of those uh, later on. Uh, the category here is uh, desktop or server. It is an active distribution and its popularity is 16 on the list currently on uh, DistroWatch. The home page is here and uh, if you click on that, uh, I showed you the home page earlier. Um, here's a mailing list you can get on if you want to get on that for support. Uh, you can get on to a user forum as well, which is a bulletin board service. Uh, documentation as well here at wiki.archlinux.org and like I said I'll put links to all of these down below the video. Here's a screenshots link. There's a download mirror site. Um, as you noticed I downloaded mine from United States uh, Arizona.edu. There is a bug tracker. You have related websites also. Okay so let's go on out to my website here. Um, DP network. It's uh, datapioneer-network.org, and I uh, self-host this website from my Raspberry Pi at home on a single board computer. I have an, a blog article here uh, called "Installing Arch Linux from Scratch." It's actually from a live ISO, 
but I uh, I called it from scratch. If you read the article, it tells you a little bit about the process and everything. But if you come down here, there is a video that I've embedded into the article, and it is uh, it's called the Complete Arch Linux Guide 2020, and uh, you can read about uh, uh, the individual who created this. It's called uh, his channel rather is called Top Linux Tech. And uh, it's a great video. It's about two hours and 22 minutes long, so it's pretty long. But what it does is it replicates basically the steps that you would follow uh, here on the wiki, uh, which is wiki.archlinux.org, and I'll put links to all of these down below the video, um, which is the installation guide for installing Arch. Okay, And so it walks you through the pre-installation for acquiring the, the image, for verifying the signature, uh, booting up the live environment and doing the whole nine yards, the installation, the configuring the system, uh, the final reboot, and then the post-installation work that you need to do. I'm not going to go through that today because that's covered in that video on my website. All right, and if you follow that website, it uh, shows you how to install what exactly what I have on my uh, main PC now uh, on the 120 gigabyte SSD. Uh, that I installed it onto uh, using uh, Rufus, which I created, uh, used as a utility that I created uh, my bootable Arch Linux uh, system image from uh, onto this uh, 120 gigabyte SSD drive. And it's running uh, off of a USB 3.0 uh, that I boot up on from the main PC. And so if you follow this video here you will get the exact same results that I got. Now you want to make sure that when you're using Rufus or Belena Etcher or some other utility that you tell that you want to take the live ISO of Arch and you want to create it from the UEFI mode not the MBR. So in other words you want the unified extensible firmware interface mode not the master boot record mode or it won't work. Alright so the guide is here and then there is a link here to the various categories that you can uh, utilize so right here see category installation process because this is not the only way to get arch obviously this is from the live ISO you can do it purely from scratch uh, which means that you would uh, compile all of your source code into binaries and that kind of thing that's an extremely long process uh, I have undertaken it before in the past, it takes uh, for me. It took a, a well over five hours to complete, and uh, I have to be honest with you. When I got through with it, it was uh, I felt like I had given birth, so didn't want to replicate that. So I used a little bit easier process, which is to use the live ISO image to start with. All right, and if you click on that link right there, it'll take you out to this website, which will show you the other ways in order to install Arch. Uh, highly recommend using the installation guide, using the live ISO, and uh, using the utility, either Rufus or Belena Etcher or whatever, and uh, creating that bootable uh, image onto a, another media uh, that will serve as your uh, distribution. Okay, so I wanted to uh, go on out to my Arch Linux uh, desktop and on my main PC and this is running off the 120 gigabyte uh, SSD drive that I mentioned earlier. Here it is. This is my Arch Linux distribution. I think it's really great. Uh, it um, Once you complete all the steps that are in the video that I uh, showed you earlier, you're going to come up to uh, just to, you know a, a server interface, no GUI. You're going to need to install the GNOME desktop environment and also the Xorg window manager. Uh, I've done both of those, of course, and so now I have the uh, GNOME um, 3.x uh, environment, desktop environment, and I also have Xorg uh, Window Manager running. I think it may even be Wayland, because I believe Way Wayland is in the ISO. Um, but anyway, this is it, and so let me uh, show you around. Now, this is not what you get out of the box. Uh, this is uh, some tweaking was done here per the instructions in the video that I linked to earlier in my article. Um, so let's take a look at it. Uh, you can right click here and change background. And you've got a fair, fairly good selection here of, of options to choose from. Uh, I'm 
choosing this one here, but you do have others to work with as well. All right, and so let's go ahead and close this out. And you can change that if, if you want to just by selecting it. Uh, and I don't want to change it, so I'm going to leave it where it is. Let's go up to the top. Here we have the panel. We have the activities panel uh, that shows you uh, things that are running. I, I am running this in um, uh, Simple Screen Recorders recording this uh, video, so I have this as well here. All right. And so um, if you come over to Places, and I'll show you how to get this. This is uh, done from the Tweaks tool in GNOME. And so if you click Places here, it puts it up on the menu. Um, you have Home, Documents, Downloads, Music, Pictures. There's my pictures. Um, and, you you know, a bunch of other things. Your typical folders, your videos. Uh, I have things on the outside on the network as well. And then internally on the computer. All right. This is a UEF, UEFI mode, so it's GPT. Um, GUID to partition uh, type, and so it's not MBR. And so you can see that. Uh, in the uh, file structure here um, of the uh, operating system. All right, so if you come across, here's a calendar. You've got a notifications area. You can click on Do Not Disturb so that you're not disturbed here. And I'll go ahead and do that now so I don't get disturbed. You have a, a calendar, and it's still November, November 30th. And um, I can add world clocks here and select weather location if I want to on this particular calendar. All right. The time is 10.09, uh, 19 a.m. All right, and so if I click that, it goes away. I do have a, um, a widget out here called a weather widget. It's provided by Open Weather Map. I do have my um, hometown of Asheville in Buncombe County, North Carolina, set up. And so it uh, says it's currently 43.4 .4 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty cold here. Not too bad. All right, if you come across, uh, here's the indicator that I do have Simple Screen Recorder running. And um, we have here the um, notifications that, that are currently in place. And uh, over here we have their uh, workspaces. And I can switch between workspaces here. So if I have something up and running, so if I bring up the... Uh, Brave web browser here, and I can uh, come across and get to a different workstation. These are dynamically assigned; uh, they're not uh, manually assigned. And so, uh, I got that set up. Here I have um, the uh, external uh, network connections that I have. I've got a backup drive, and I got a 1.1 gigabyte volume as well. And I can open that up too. Here, here I have an area. It gives me access to my uh, volume control, my headphones, my microphone. The uh, it is a real tech audio USB microphone, and it is set to full volume right now. I've got a, I'm wired connected. I'm not Wi-Fi connected. However, I could turn this on and go to Wi-Fi if I wanted to. I have Bluetooth turned off, um, and then I can uh, power down the system and things like that as well. And if I do click on that, it's the same thing. So all of those are connected together. If you come down to the bottom, this is a, a latte dock. And so here, if I click on that, that's a web browser. Here's my calendar. So if I click that, that's my calendar here, my enlarged calendar. Um, I have LibreOffice, the full office suite in here as well. And so I've got uh, access to Writer. And uh, let me click on that. So this is Writer. And let's take a look at the uh, version of LibreOffice we're running here. We're running 7.0.3.1. All right. And it's from a flat pack. Uh, and so it's uh, very nice. All right. So if I close that, um, let me go ahead and just close it out. All right. And so let's go over. I've also, in addition to that, let me show you, I do have uh, Calc Spreadsheet, Impress Presentation, Drawing, math formula and base as well so all of the entire LibreOffice suite is uh, available to you here now that did not come out of the box from the live ISO I did have to install that all right and so ocular is my PDF reader and if I bring that up to full screen there uh, the full size um, you know you can use that to uh, 
open your PDFs. And so let's see if I have any PDFs that I can open here. Yeah, let's let's do that one. Let's open that one up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right. So um, there's my music player, my photos. I can click on that, and it brings up all my photos that I have and organizes those for me. Um, very nice. All right. I can import photos from other devices. In fact, it just discovered one from my backups drive. So I could uh, go ahead and import the photos if I have them there. I can select albums if I wanted to create an album and my favorites. I don't have any favorites set up. I just started working with this. All right. And so let me go ahead and close that. Uh, I have to come across. Uh, here is the um, file manager. Okay. And so this is the GNOME file manager, probably Thunar if I had to guess. And uh, it's, you know it's kind of clunky. It's it's not the, the as pretty as it could be, but uh, very functional. All right. So uh, one of the things I notice about this uh, Arch uh, distribution, the 2020 version from the Live ISO, uh, is that it's uh, very responsive. As you can see, I do have 16 gigs of RAM on this system. It's a uh, quad-core i3 7th generation processor Intel so uh, it is moving right along uh, but uh, very responsive uh, distribution very happy with it it is running off like I said a, an SSD drive it's not internal to the computer and so it probably has slowed down just a little bit from what it would be if it were installed uh, internally but uh, still very nice all right and um, if I click on other locations, you can see that uh, for the Raspberry Pi here, I do have some shares out there. These are Samba shares. One's called uh, File Store Vol 1. Uh, it's anonymous, so if I click Connect, I don't require any authentication there. Um, you can see I have access to this. So I, it's a one terabyte uh, hard drive, spinning hard drive. I believe it's a Western Digital Black. And so, uh, and it is uh, set up. As I said, a Samba share. It's actually controlled by Open Media Vault on a Raspberry Pi 4 that I have set up. Um, and so, if you haven't used Open Media Vault, a great application as well. So, you can set up Samba shares, you can set up your own personal cloud, which I've done as well. And, uh, and so, I, I really like it. Okay, so um, coming across here, we have the software store. And if I bring that up to full, see if I can get that up to full screen. There we go. Here are some of the editor's picks. Um, Calibre. If you haven't used that, that's your, um, your documents manager uh, for uh, things like uh, ebooks and short stories and that kind of thing. It, I really like that. Audio and video. Uh, there's a ton of stuff here, guys. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this, but you can see there's a ton of stuff available here for that particular category. Um, let's go back. If I go down to games, there's a, also a ton of games. If you're a gamer, you're not going to be lost in Arch Linux. And uh, and by the way, Arch Linux, uh, this version, Arch Linux in general, but this version specifically, uh, the 2020 Live ISO UEFI mode setup, uh, is a rolling release of Arch. And so you get the latest and greatest, the cutting edge, if you will. Uh, it uses the Zen kernel, which uh, gives you a little more control over things like your hardware, uh, and it is a very responsive uh, kernel, um, and it is a rolling release kind of a cutting edge kernel as well. So you're going to get the latest and greatest in this particular distro that I've created here. Uh, education and science, you've got a bunch of stuff here as well. You can read the titles yourself. Go back and look at the video. I'm not going to go through the whole list here by any means. But you've got, you know, you got a ton of stuff uh, regardless here. Communications and news here. Um, again, ton of stuff here as well. Uh, Web torrent, transmission, element, uh, Wireshark, you know, you name it. You got it here. Um, let's go back. Uh, graphics and photography. Yeah, you got the the usual players, GNU image manipulation, you've got Inkscape, you've got uh, Color Paint, um, you know, you've, you've got them all, Krita. So you got everything you could think of here and more. Uh, really happy with this. Uh, and you can install things from that. 
productivity. Uh, you've got uh, you know your your usual stuff here as well. Focus Rider, Calibre. I don't have Calibre installed here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, well, I'm not going to do that. Calibre requires a setup, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but let me take another one here that I might be able to install. Um, hmm, uh, let's see. Let's uh, let's take a look at. Uh, come on down. Um, I don't want to get something that's going to require a lot of configuration. Um, some of these I haven't even heard of. Uh, it's really amazing how much stuff is here. But uh, let me do Red Notebook. I don't even know what that is. Uh, it's a graphical diary and journal. I'm going to go ahead and install it. You just click the Install button, and uh, it goes ahead and installs it for you. And then you can launch it right from here, or you can close it. And then you can go click activities and come up and uh, let's see, let's red book. Yeah, there we go. Red notebook, right click and add to favorites and then just go ahead and launch it. Click on it. Like I said, this is very responsive. I, I really like it. So here's the red notebook, uh, the journaling software. And uh, you bring it up to full screen. I'm not going to get into it, but it's already installed. That's how quick it was. That's how easy it was. All right, here's the terminal. And uh, let's open that up. I've already configured this, by the way. And uh, let me go ahead and see if I have any, uh, I can update the repos. And so let me do a sudo um, pacman dash capital S Y Y and put in my password. Synchronizing the passage da package databases. And so <clears throat> in Arch Linux, it has three main. Um, package databases, core, extra, and community repositories here. I've, a, I've added one of them called Heracura, um, and I can't recall why I did that, but I have installed that one in my repositories. So it looks at all of these, and so uh, you can use that command. Uh, Arch Linux does use the Pacman package manager, and uh, Pacman, and then Pamek is a uh, helper. <clears throat> the yay is another helper, and I do have that installed as well. If I want to update the system, uh, and it is updated quite frequently, uh, you never have to worry about installing an update to another version of Arch Linux because it is a rolling release, but you do need to update the system occasionally. It will do it automatically for you and prompt you if you set it that way. But let me do a sudo pacman dash capital S Y U and uh, synchronize everything here and it says that we do have six packages that need to be upgraded bash enchant flatpak hitapi uh hidapi rather austri python lazy object proxy so let me go ahead and say yes here and let it update i think i've installed htop uh, did not come out of the box and i've installed glances as well uh, i do have a video on Glances, if you've never seen Glances, uh, it's a an eye into your system. I really like Glances. All right, so it's updated. That's how quick it was. So let me clear this screen on this, and let me do HTOP. And you can see here we're running uh, 1.77 gigs out of 16. It has been up for a while. It's been running for, uh, let's see here, uptime 14 hours, 48 minutes, and 5 seconds. So... Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's been up for a while, so it's been consuming some more memory than usual. If you fire this up, or do a restart rather, or come up from uh, cold, um, it'll be probably running, it's still over a gig, it'll be about 1.1 gigabytes um, that it's pulling down in memory. I do have quad core here, so the processor has been run. I am re running a simple screen recorder, so it is showing you here that uh, things are going on in the background. Uh, but you, <clears throat> we have 100 tasks. We have 353 threads, two running. Load averages look really good. You've got four cores, so these uh, figures are really wonderful at, at 1 minute, 5 minutes, and 15 minutes. 1.08, 1.23, and 1.21. We do have an uptime of 14 hours, or 14 days, uh, 14 hours rather, 49 minutes and 2 seconds. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and clear this out. Let's quit that and uh, bring up that full screen 
and let me do a uh, glances and show you what glances looks like this is glances and uh, I do have a video out on glances it's different from HTOP, it's different from top uh, you can't kill a process using glances but you can take a look at glances uh, you can see how much more information is available here I'm not going to get into it this video is not about glances but we'll tell you that glances does have a web server interface or component to it and so it's really wonderful it has an advantage over HTOP and top in that I can go to another machine on my network and I can pull up uh, glances and monitor my Arch Linux distribution for example uh, just like this through a web browser using the glances uh, web interface and so uh, keep that in mind take a look at my glances video and uh, you'll be able to do the same so let me go ahead and clear this out alright and so let's do uh, you name a so it says that we're running Linux Arch Linux GNOME 5.9.10-arch1 okay if I do a df-kh here you can see that I do have uh, root of the file system it is on dev sdb2 uh, I do have home here dev sdb3 and then boot efi uh, partition of 500 megs at dev sdb1 so sdb1 2 and 3 are the three partitions and those are configured per the video that I showed you earlier uh, from the article in my uh, my website uh, data pioneer dash network dot org so take a look at that you can replicate this as well alright so let me go ahead and clear the screen and let's go ahead and exit out of the terminal alright so I have the Vivaldi browser installed I have Firefox installed then I have my favorite Brave browser installed you see how quick that came up uh, it's wonderful um, and if you haven't used Brave I've got a video out on Brave as well take a look at it it is a very secure web browser I really like it I have all my bookmarks here uh, that I have available uh, and it synchronizes across all my devices I really like uh, Brave uh, and so I use Brave for all my uh, and I have DuckDuckGo as my search engine so I have this set up exactly the way I like it and uh, I use Vivaldi occasionally Firefox occasionally but primarily I use Brave alright so let me go ahead and close this um, and then I have uh, well Caden Live I do editing of my videos simple screen recorder uh, screenshot for taking snapshots GR sync for uh, syncing um, and doing backups and that kind of thing PDF slicer I have red notebook that I just installed and then I've got my externals I got my backup drive my trash can and then show applications so if I click that brings up the applications I've got uh, four screens of applications here and so these are the, some of the applications that are installed on the system right now and you do get a ton of them out of the box but uh, things like HTOP and Caden Live and you know GNU image manipulation program or GIMP th those were not installed uh, LeafPad was not installed and if you haven't used LeafPad that's a, a neat um, note it's kind of a notepad kind of like Windows uh, notepad alright and so let me get back to the applications let's go back to here and uh, so let's go down to the third screen so you can see some of the things we have installed here um, highly recommend ocular for your PDF uh, I got Stellarium if you're an astronomer or a budding astronomer you can take a look at that it's a great program I've got some utilities here uh, text editor as well uh, another web browser I've got Vim installed so it's really really wonderful okay now one of the other things I wanted to show you let me go back and uh, let me click out of this and let me click activities and click uh, tweak tool and so if I click the tweak click on the tweaks tool hard to say um, it brings up this uh, screen here and so here we have uh, general you can turn these on and off over here uh, so you can just turn your animations off or turn them on for appearance here you've got your themes I've got the application at weighted dark I like the dark theme uh, cursor icons I've got the Adweta default here uh, I've got the default shell default sound um, I've got ice twigs JPEG background image here um, adjustments lock screen for extensions 
here I've got some of that I installed as well. The video that I pointed to in the article shows you how to install some additional extensions out on the web, so I'm not going to do that here. Like dash to dock was not installed here. I did that uh, per the instructions. Open weather was not installed. Uh, user themes was not installed. Those That kind of thing. I don't think workspace indicator was installed either. So those were installed uh, as extensions here in the tweaks tool. Fonts. Um, I've got the uh, Roboto Lite 14 point for legacy window tiles. Subpixel for LCD is checked uh, for anti-aliasing and that's in the video as well. Um, keyboard and mouse, you can set that up the way you want it. Start up applications. I don't have any starting up. Top bar. Uh, here's where I get the uh, battery percentage if I want it. I don't have a battery. This is on a main PC. But, um, you know, that kind of thing. So, got hot corners that you can turn on and off. If you want to turn the clock on and off, you can turn it on and off there. Uh, calendar, that kind of thing. Um, window tile bars and windows. Uh, you can click on those things, okay? And workspaces, make them static or dynamic. I have it set up for dynamic right now, okay? All right, so uh, that's about all I wanted to show you here. And uh, you can configure your Latte Dock as well, by the way. And I think my video shows you how to do that. So I'm not going to go into that here. But this is uh, my Arch Linux distribution. I really like it. It's a rolling release, like as I mentioned. Never have to worry about upgrading it to a new version. It's constantly being updated. As soon as developers uh, release the uh, updates, I get them. So uh, a very nice distribution of Linux. I've been an Arch fan for many years. I've used uh, Arch Linux since uh, its inception, pretty much. Uh, I've been using Linux since 1994. The kernel was developed by Linus Torvalds in, I think, 1991, but it didn't got, become available uh, for the GNU operating system and the mainstream until uh, about 1993. So I've I've been using Linux from the begin very beginning. Um, okay, so if you like this video, if you thought it was useful, please uh, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do that as well and hit that bell off to the right to... Uh, Make sure that you get every video that I upload as I upload it. All right, and so this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.